Okay guys, how is it going? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, welcome to the second video of Expedition 44 YouTube's channel. Um, in the first video, uh, we did a small introduction of the project, of the duster, you know, the vehicle. Uh, and of course, uh, we tried to, you know, give a little suspense to this video. In this video, we are gonna talk about all the modifications that we have done to the duster so far. Uh, keep in mind that we have a lot more stuff planned to uh, to do in the future. Uh, some of the stuff that we have done already, uh, mainly some uh, pieces of equipment that we built ourselves, uh, we designed and we, we built for the duster and that, as far as we know, are completely original and one of a kind for this model of vehicle. Um, you know, those still have, you know, some improvements that will uh, have to be done in the future. But for now, let's dive into the video and let's talk about how the duster is looking right now, how it started and everything, all the steps we took to get to where we are right now. So, the whole, um, you know, modification process of the duster started right here in the computer, uh, you know. I got some pictures of the of the car from Google. Uh, you know, I tried to get a similar looking car, uh, a white Dacia Duster, the model that I own. And you know, I went on Photoshop and started, you know, planning on, on how I wanted it to look like. Um, I threw big tires. Um, I started playing a little bit with the designs, you know, the the graphics that we are gonna, we were gonna apply to the car. Uh, you know, uh, roof rack as well, what we would put on top of the roof rack, you know? So a lot of preparation work so that, you know, we could take a better look at the whole thing uh, and see if it would please us and not to be working uh, towards something that would later, you know, be useless. Um, going a little further, once we had the design, we then started working on the things uh, by parts. So one of the things that changes the visual uh, of the car the most, for sure, is the big tires. Uh, I went on Google, started uh, investigating in some forums, and we found out that pretty much the largest tire uh, you can fit on the duster without major modifications is the 225-75 R16 tire. Uh, you know, the stock, the, the Dacia duster comes stock with around 27 inch tires uh, and this is almost a 30 so a 29 and a half inch tire you know two and a half inches uh, is a pretty significant difference and we knew that um, in order to fit these tires there was other stuff that we had to do one of them suspension right so we immediately started looking uh, for suspension for the car uh, the options aren't too many, uh, but we were very fortunate to have the collaboration of 4x4 Project out of Spain. Uh, they are a online store uh, that carries all the different types of suspensions for every different make and model of four-wheel drive that you guys can imagine. Uh, you know, their product is great. They are, um, you know, wholesalers or representatives of uh, Bilstein uh, and they provided us with a kit of Bilstein shocks and Ikeback springs to lift the duster. The kit that they provided us with is the Bilstein Advanced 7017, so 7017 kit uh, for the duster. You know, this kit comprises of four shocks, two front, two rear, Bilstein top quality, okay? We're talking about shocks that uh, the strut isn't any longer than the factory, so you guys can run only the shocks with the factory springs, okay? Uh, we also uh, wanted to raise a little bit the, the ground clearance, so we went with the Ikebag springs that give another 30 mil of lift to the duster. The very good thing about this combo is that these springs also come with a higher rate. So uh, what this means is that you guys can put more weight on the vehicle without it sagging so much. Uh, you know, Expedition 4.4 means we are 
before, the crew is comprised of four guys, uh, all in the same car, plus all the gear that we carry on it. Um, we got it pretty heavy, you know? And we have to say, the suspension was absolutely fantastic, okay? Articulation is great. Um, the Duster being a fully independent suspension vehicle, um, the suspension lift also improves the ground, clear, the ground clearance slightly uh, as opposed to the solid axle vehicles where you're only raising the body of the car and not the axle. Um, so, you know, uh, we were very happy from the first moment we got this kit. Um, the street performance hasn't changed, uh, well, significantly, you know. We do notice uh, a little bit heavier um, steering, you know, also because of the added weight and overall footprint of the tires. And, you know, the angle of the CVs is a little more pronounced, but nothing that we had to, you know, compensate with lowering kits or anything like that. Thank you once again to 4x4 Project. They were, uh, you know, a big, big, big help. Um, and we were very happy to to have them come on board the project and to have them want to collaborate with us uh, and we hope that in the future uh, we will be able to you know partner up with 4x4 project again and keep bringing you guys awesome content about it what's up guys good morning we just came to the shop to put our suspension the build stein the model will be on the description for sure they were sent by 4x4 project one of our sponsors and uh yeah this will take a few hours more in the meantime we will get uh other small preparations oh cameras are already charging video is already uh video cameras already charging as well we have a bunch of memory cards we have the roof rack painted we just need to put it we just need to put it in the car we will do with that later on and after the suspension we'll just go and put the tires as well so yeah everything is going uh, smooth everything is we are like working against the clock you know we are working day and night uh, for this project to happen but it will happen later this day or tomorrow morning the latest but I think we are we are on a good uh, path, a good track. So see you later on, guys. Okay. So um, now that we have spoken about the suspension, let's now talk about the tires. Uh, you know, we were pretty set on the biggest size we could fit, the 29 and a half inch tire. Um, you know, we looked at mud terrain versus all terrain. You know, the tires that come stock in the duster. They are very good for the street, uh, but they're not good at all for, for the off-road. We thought a lot about the mud terrains, because, I mean, who doesn't like a mud terrain, you know? They look great, uh, they give a big, you know, very aggressive look to the car. Uh, and the car being, you know, a very SUV, uh, city-looking car, we wanted to, you know, give it a little bit more of an aggressive look. Uh, but then again, you know, mud terrains, they're very heavy, you know, compared to all terrains in the same size. They are way heavier because they just have, you know, that much more reinforcement on the sidewalls and in the thread pattern and everything. Um, and, you know, uh, we were trying to keep the car as lightweight as we could. We decided to go with the, you know, very well tested and uh, with just an awesome reputation overall. BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires. They have a very wide array of tire sizes. Um, they even have a tire size that is the stock tire size to the duster. So if you guys own dusters, you want to get um, all-terrain tires and you don't want to increase the overall you know, wheel size or tire size, uh, BF Goodrich does offer a two 1565 R16, which is the around 27 inch tire uh, that comes stuck with the duster. You know, these are the tires that we have in, the, in our Jeep Wrangler. Uh, we have used them extensively. We really like their appearance for one, and who doesn't like 
a good looking tire, right? Um, the performance is great. You know, they do very well on sand. They do very well on, uh, you know, loose dirt and rocks. They also do pretty well in mud, uh, surprisingly for an all-terrain. Um, and, you know, overall it just seemed like a great uh, fit of a tire for us. Um, we have uh, heard people with experiences that these tires are not too great on the road on wet road this is when it rains um, out of our personal uh, experience we never had a problem but still you know uh, putting this out there um, you know we don't have any affiliation with BF Goodrich uh, they are not sponsoring uh, we purchased the tires with our own money uh, but still, I mean, I still uh, like to give shout outs when uh, companies produce nice gear and uh, BF Gridges tires are no doubt a great add to the duster. Then um, we had already raisin the car. Um, we had to do something about the underbody protection. You know, the dusters, at least the phase one, which is the one we have until 2017, the phase two uh, has some slight modifications to it that, you know, um, let's call it improvements. One of the things that was really, really poorly thought out from Dacia in the phase one is the EGR valve or the exhaust gas recirculation valve. Uh, in the phase ones, this valve, um, you know, almost hangs lower than anything else on the car. I would say it's pretty much the lowest point in the car. Since we're doing the EGR valve as well, we thought we would do the rear diff and uh, the 4x4 duster that we got. I don't know about uh, the other uh, versions, if they do come with a front uh, engine guard as well. Um, but, you know, ours was steel and since we were designing everything from scratch, we decided to also design a full aluminum uh, front guard that would, you know, come up a little bit further to, you know, compensate for the low approach angle that this car has. So if we were to hit the front skid plate uh, on something, it wouldn't damage, you know, the plastics. Uh, the, the front bumper of the car, instead it would just hit the, the front skid plate and we would be good. All these protections uh, are 5 mil uh, maritime grade aluminum, they are very strong, very lightweight, you know. We thought about steel to save some cost, but you know, we figured uh, while we're at it, we're designing everything from scratch. Let's just let's just bite the bullet, spend the money, uh, buy ones, cry ones, and get the aluminum version. Um, we designed the whole thing. Uh, we put it into production. Uh, there were some modifications that had to be done uh, after we had the the protections already. The fact of the matter is, they're installed. They did great. They have taken a lot of hits at the, trans the Transparent East course and so far they are holding like a beast. Guys, expect some more news about these protections in the future because uh, there is the possibility that we make them available to the public if that's something you guys are looking for and we were able to do the whole thing for a very competitive price. Okay, so we talked tires, suspension, under protection. The next area that we're gonna tackle is the storage. So, um, as we said in the previous video, uh, the Dacia for its size has a very generous trunk. Now, keep in mind, Expedition 44, we are four crew members and we were all traveling uh, in the same car. So, both uh, front seats and rear seats were completely taken with the crew. So uh, what we were left with was the trunk and space on the roof. Now the duster comes uh, stuck with two roof bars that in my opinion and I hope that I'm not you know pushing buttons on any uh, any Dacia duster fanboys but they're really shitty okay. Um, they stand really high, they are really thick 
So, I've seen some pictures, and I can I can roll in some pictures from the internet, uh, from other roof racks that people are running on these cars, but they just stand so high on the car. I mean, we're talking, uh, you can pretty much, uh, you know, shove like a whole hand in between the roof of the car and the bottom of this roof rack. So, you know, uh, we are very concerned about uh, you know the balance and we didn't want to raise our center of gravity uh, that much so um, we started looking at what was available for other makes and models and you know we came across these pictures of a really streamlined uh, roof rack and you know we just went for it we decided to build the whole thing ourselves um, you know as a prototype model and Guys, if you go on, on our Instagram, you have plenty of pictures of the wreck in use. I have standed on top of the roof rack myself and it is very strong, you know? Um, we were carrying the spare tire up there, we were carrying the tent, a spare fuel jerry can, uh, you know, other dry bags with clothing and sleeping bags and everything, uh, our max tracks, well, traction boards this is were also up there so the roof rack performed incredibly there are some improvements that we will do keep in mind this is still the you know beta version of the rack um, right now it's at you know a 50 50 steel and aluminum uh, the production version will be a hundred percent aluminum of course excluding the hardware uh, but you know uh, it is very lightweight compared to other options and it, it is very streamlined. While we were going at the roof rack, we also decided to um, throw a lead bar on the top. We went with a very, you know, Amazon special uh, lead bar that has that had some pretty good reviews. Uh, we were able to get the size we wanted to fit the, the roof rack perfectly. Um, and since it's such a streamlined roof rack with the bar installed we didn't have the need of installing a wind deflector uh, and from experience uh, the rack doesn't whistle it doesn't make any more noise it's very quiet which is also great however we have a, a wind deflector for the for the roof rack for the guys who don't want to you know carry the lead bar or they just don't see the need of carrying one and then of course the wind deflector will play a big role about that. We are very very happy and very proud that we were able to build this roof rack so also expect some great news about that in the future. Continuing with uh, you know storage we also decided to build a whole drawer system slash galley area for the back of the car. Uh, you know, uh, we were thinking of building it from aluminum, but then we were already, you know, a little bit uh, short in time before the trip. So, you know, we just went to the local hardware store, got a big sheet of plywood and started working for it. We were very lucky that all our measurements uh, came on point the first time uh, the box we were able to build fits perfectly uh, in the in the trunk of the car and sin since it's so tight it doesn't even need to be bolted it's not going anywhere unless you really want to take it out and we did have to we did have to take it out during the trip took all the drawers and stuff the fridge out and uh, it's not something that, you know, two guys can't tackle in a couple minutes. Last piece of, of gear that uh, we want to talk about is the compressor. Uh, you know, uh, it's very important in our opinion to have an, an onboard compressor to fill the tires uh, when, you know, you're going constantly from off-road to on-road. Uh, for a long time we didn't have a compressor uh, and we were always, you know, having to be really, really careful on when we got out of the off-road and onto the road uh, we would have to drive you know, really slowly 
uh, turned very slowly until we reached a gas station where we could fill up the tires. But you know, while we were at it, modifying the duster into a proper off-roading machine, we decided to throw the ARB uh, single compressor. It fills the tires in a heartbeat. Keep in mind, we are talking about 29 and a half inch tires. It's overall a small tire. This pretty much concludes the video. Uh, guys, I hope you find our content entertaining. Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming in the near future. Uh, we have reviews. We have the whole, uh, you know, documentary series uh, that will be in, I don't know, maybe four episodes of our tra Trans Pyrenees course. Uh, the Trans Pyrenees uh, is a route that goes from the west to the east. Uh, it crosses three borders, Spain, France and Andorra. We did the whole thing in a week. It was about 3000 kilometers. We had a blast. It was great to, you know, test all the modifications that we did to the car. And that is what's coming up next in the next videos. Um, guys, stay tuned. Uh, go follow us on Instagram. You know, it takes a long time to edit and put these videos together uh, photos are much easier to edit and we upload every two days on Instagram so you guys will have much earlier access to all the content uh, we are on Instagram at expedition 44.44 um, links will be in the description for everything that we talked about uh, and until next time stay tuned